Welcome to our second video on multiple sclerosis. Today we have Dr. Anani with us. What, is, what causes multiple sclerosis? Well, multiple sclerosis is a disorder in which the uh, certain structures of the brain are damaged. And it's generally thought that uh, this damage occurs because of activation of certain cells. These are called T cells. These cells are normally present in the person's body. They fight bacteria and fight infections. But they get activated in an abnormal way. And then there, these T cells travel into the central nervous system and create destruction of certain parts of the brain structure. The main uh, portion that they cause destruction in is the myelin, which is the cuffing around the nerves. If you can imagine the nerves in your brain to be consistent of a cell, and from the cells uh, there are copper wires, if you like, the, called axons that travel to certain places, and the axons are insulated by myelin, which is like the plastic that you'd see around your copper wire. So at first, they thought that MS affects only the insulation, the myelin of uh, the nerves of the central nervous system, but then they found out it actually also affects the axons themselves, which are the copper wires in our analogy here. But also it affects the cell itself. So it affects three things in the central nervous system. It affects the myelin, the axons, and the cells themselves. Are any geographical areas more prone? They're actually, that's a very good question. There are geographical areas that are more prone to have multiple sclerosis. The further you are from the equator, north or south, the more likely statistically that you're going to acquire multiple sclerosis. Um, and they don't know why that exists. It, it has to do with the sunlight, and some people feel that it has to do with the uh, genetic predisposition to uh, multiple sclerosis. But if you are born in an area that's closer to the equator, and traveled and immigrated north or south, further away from the equator, and you did this under the age of 15, you will actually acquire the risk statistics of the area you moved to. So let's say somebody was uh, living at the equator in Africa and then traveled younger than the age of 15, traveled to Canada or North Canada. That individual's risk factor will be equivalent to a native Canadian. However, if that person had immigrated to Canada or to the South Pole, um, after the age of 15, that individual will retain the risk factor of the uh, equator region. So it has to do also with environmental factors, not just with genetic factors, but geography has to do a lot. And as a matter of fact, in, in World War II, uh, there is some theory that some agents used by the British Army when they were occupying the Faroe Islands in Iceland, uh, that some material was used during that war that predisposed that section of the world to more MS, and there are some studies done on that. Um, but also, those sections are further away from the equator, so that adds to it as well. The geography adds to it as well. So we, in general, we, we think that geography has to do with it to some degree, genetics will have to do with it to some degree, and possibly some environmental factors, toxins or even viruses have to do with it for some degree. There is no clear etiology or reason for patients to acquire multiple sclerosis that is known, but we feel that there are uh, bunch of factors that contribute. And what role does genetics play in multiple sclerosis? Genetics play a little role. Uh, there's something called the genetic load, which is how much uh, the genes can affect your chance of developing multiple sclerosis or acquiring multiple sclerosis, and it's no more than 25%. So they do not contribute more than 25% of your total risk. Um, if you study twins, for example, and you will notice that twins who are identical uh, who share more genes than fraternal twins, the identical twins have more risk of developing multiple sclerosis. If one twin has multiple sclerosis, the identical brother or sister ha has a higher risk than fraternal twins. And also, about 20% of patients who have multiple sclerosis say that there is a direct family member that has multiple sclerosis as well. So in other words, to sum it up, it's not quite that if you have a family member with multiple sclerosis that you will acquire multiple sclerosis but it increases your chances a little bit. Okay. And what symptoms would you have if you have a multiple sclerosis? Well, it could be a, a, a whole bunch of symptoms because, as I mentioned at the beginning of the program, multiple sclerosis affects the brain and the optic nerves, among other areas. Um, so any portion of the brain that gets affected will cause certain symptoms. For example, 
it, if it affects the sensory portion of the brain, you can have numbness. Um, if it affects the motor portion of the brain, it can cause weakness on one side of your body or your legs or your arms. If it affects the optic nerve, then you can have visual loss. It affects certain centers in the brain stem, it can then cause double vision. Sometimes people have um, visual loss. Anyway, so when would come a point that they should maybe think about getting medical attention for that, maybe having multiple sclerosis or not? Well, the visual loss that comes with multiple sclerosis is the common, uh, a common phenomenon called optic neuritis, which is an inflammation of the optic nerve. The optic nerve is considered um, a central nervous system organ. Um, even though it's a nerve, but it's not quite a peripheral uh, nerve, it's actually a central nerve, it's mm -hmm. behind your eyes, near the brain. So it's affected often by multiple sclerosis. So when patients develop optic neuritis, or inflammation of the optic nerve, there are certain features that come with, comes with it. And, and the main feature is pain behind the eye, especially on eye movement. So patients who have visual loss with pain on eye movement uh, should, well, any patient who had lost vision should see the doctor, but that particularly is more indicative to the doctor of this being related to multiple sclerosis. So that you'll have visual loss, you'll see blurriness out of that eye, you'll see cloudiness of that eye, and you also would have a little bit of pain uh, on eye movement. And then when the examining neurologist or neuroophthalmologist uh, examine the eye, they'll notice decrease in acuity, which is the de decrease in the capacity, your capacity to see small letters, and also decrease in color vision, which is very important. Um, those are the patients that uh, are unable to differentiate the grades of color or shades of gray zone shades. And that is commonly seen in patients with optic neuritis. And also on the examination of the fundus, which is the appearance of the optic nerve itself. Those are the machines that we use to look at the optic nerve. Um, you'll see, in some cases, swelling of the optic nerve. So you can see, if you're lucky, you can see the optic nerve swollen, and that will lead you to think it was optic neuritis. But you don't always see swelling. Sometimes the inflammation of the optic nerve is actually behind the eye, between the eye and the brain. And uh, patients can have what's called retrobulbar optic neuritis, uh, which is an inflammation of the optic nerve behind the eye. So you see all the features except the swelling of the optic nerve. But the, um, the neuroophthalmologist should be able to detect that very easily. Okay. And in terms of the numbness, also patients have numbness that sometimes comes from other etiologies, other reasons. Numbness that comes from multiple sclerosis generally affects at least one extremity. Uh, so the whole arm will be numb, for example, the whole leg will be numb. Or sometimes the numbness will involve the arm and the leg. Sometimes it involves the trunk as well. So the bigger the location of the numbness, uh, the, the geography of your numbness, if you like, the more likely it's coming from your brain than coming from a nerve or coming from an arm that you stepped on. Would this be a constant numbness or intermittent? It's usually oh. constant. It's usually constant. Um, so if a person wakes up and has numbness in the arm and is able to shake his arm off and the numbness goes away, there's more likely a peripheral problem, transient problem. For example, he pressured a nerve when he was sleeping on the arm, like in carpal tunnel syndrome, for example. But in patients with multiple sclerosis who have numbness, they have numbness that's consistent and okay. continuous. Um, and it usually involves the whole arm or the whole leg or uh, both. <laughs> And if they're not sure, I think anybody should exam be examined by a neurologist right away. A neurologist on the examination will be able to differentiate what's causing the numbness. The same thing with motor loss. If you uh, sort of can't move your hand or can't move your leg, or that's something you'd want to go seek medical attention right for right away. Okay. Because you could, it doesn't have to be a mess. It can be other things that can, causing this, that can be causing this, like stroke or mm -hmm. uh, other urgent neurological conditions. Okay, thank you for joining us, Dr. Nini. Next week, tune in for more information about multiple sclerosis.